Okay, but explain to my viewers what, we know what adaptogens are. A lot of my viewers do not know what an adaptogen is. So explain what an adaptogen an is. An adaptogen is a plant that will change a physiological value, let's call blood pressure. Right. Let's suppose you have high blood pressure. Right. By taking a certain adaptogen, it will lower your blood pressure. Let's say you have low blood pressure, hypotension. By taking that same adaptogen, it will elevate mm -hmm. your blood pressure. That was the discovery of the two Russian scientists. And now there are a number of plants that have been discovered. Once again, man, the vegetarian, because of these plants right. that <laughs> normalize right. your physiological values. And by giving the body what it needs, I know it sounds redundant, the body can repair itself right and the body can function optimally and isn't that really what it's all about it is optimal Absolutely. function yep so it helps with high blood pressure cholesterol diabetes it helps with how many diseases did you say well this is the national institutes of health that made the statement that it will mitigate in over 300 diseases right but once again it's not a drug a drug helps with diseases, a plant gives the body what it needs, and the body is able to deal with uh, a non-homeostasis condition right. and bring it back to normal values. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, where, where do you think that this is going to benefit the majority of people? Is it just, uh, I think that what I'm trying to get at here is I think that an awful lot of this is just about everybody having all of the nutrients so that they're basically going back to nat natural health, right? That's what we want to do with this product, isn't it? Well, it's, it's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger than that. And yes, that's, yeah. that's part of it, and I'll get to that in a second. There are 80,000 chemicals being dumped into the environment uh, in the U.S., which means, you know, Although they've given the you know Canadian border guards guns now, they can't stop the winds from blowing all these chemicals into Canada. <laughs> We're affected as well. Right. So 80,000 different chemicals. There are a number of tests, uh, National Human Adipose Tissue Survey. There's been a number of testing. Uh, they even tested in 2004, they did a study where they looked at the umbilical blood mm -hmm. of newborns mm -hmm. and found over 200 chemicals right. in the umbilical blood of a newborn. In Canada, the number was 232 chemicals. Wow. So we're all toxic. The problem is our livers are the workhorse of the body. That may not be a problem because for me, that becomes a primary function. Our bodies have a natural triage system. Mm -hmm. There are certain things our bodies want. Primarily, they use the energy to digest food so it doesn't become a septic bolus. And then they want to assimilate the nutrients, if they get any, from that food. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, they want to detoxify or repair tissue, depending on the damage. Then, of course, they want to grow a new tail if you're a lizard. Or regeneration and may never get there because we run out of energy far earlier. Now, one of the problems we have and one of the functions of adaptogens is to maintain life first. Life. So the liver being overworked stores, well, causes the toxins to be stored. If it can't get rid of them through the four avenues that we have, we breathe them out, we sweat them out, uh, they can come out in the feces or in the urine, mm -hmm. they have to store them. So the liver is overworked and gets very toxic. One of the papers uh, that I have seen recently on Ringo Olifera, which made the lights go on for me was that uh, the primary function of the body is to have the liver healthy. Mm -hmm. The primary function of Ringo Olifera is to detox the liver. So they did a study where they used uh, acetaminophen to damage the livers of mice. Mm -hmm. And uh, damage the livers of mice, they gave them Moringa Olifera. And by eating Moringa Olifera, all the liver enzyme counts became normal. So the primary function 
of this plant seems to be to protect us by healing the liver or allowing ourselves to heal the liver. Now, I know a lot of people have read one of the attributes is weight loss. Mm -hmm. Weight loss cannot occur if your liver is toxic. Right. For a number of reasons. One, it won't break down fat. And it won't break down fat if it's overworked. And it won't break down fat if it knows that your toxins are stored in the fat and that will put more fat into the body. Right. Now, where are we going with this plant? We're going to try to save the world. Very good. Very good. I, and I'd like to share that my husband's iron counts were 1,700 when we started on this. They're now down to 210. He's, he's not alone. I asked recently, uh, one of the women came up after my lecture. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, an, it's an interesting story. And uh, she had had uh, hemochromatosis. That's what John has. Right. Yeah. And she had cirrhosis of the liver. Mm -hmm. He would had. She was taking um, Ringo mm -hmm. for nine months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, accidentally the hemochromatosis went away. The lead poisoning left. Wow. And it became uh, interesting because she told me the story of her doctor had accused her of being a drinker. But she didn't drink. <laughs> and uh, her liver counts, her liver function is now normal. Right. So there are some strange things going on, uh, as I say, when you give the body what it needs. My guest is Dr. Howard Fisher, who is a specialist on anti-aging medicine. Very impressive. Okay. Hippocrates made the statement, let food be thy medicine, medicine be thy food. How does this relate to Merengue Alifero? Well, I think it actually perfectly encapsulates the statement because it's a complete food. It gives you everything you need from A to Z, A to mm -hmm. Z in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we understand a few things. Now, you see commercials all the time about vitamins. Mm -hmm. Everything you need from A to Z. Right. Well, are they bioavailable? Is there an excipient? What really happens to the vitamin? And bringing up Hippocrates is perfect because many of your viewers may be aware, some will not be aware of the Hippocrates Institute in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, it's run by Dr. Brian Clements, uh, a brilliant man, author of many books, and uh, he treats disease with food. Very serious diseases right. with food and is highly successful. In one of his books, he comments on uh, a friend of his, and I love this story, because a friend of his owned the uh, porta potty Johnny on the job, you know, the portable toilets yeah. that they put up at all these functions, <laughs> concerts, whatever. Yeah. And so uh, at the end of an event, you know, they pick them up, they take them back, and they empty them, they wash them down, and they have screens under the opening. Mm -hmm. And he said his people would look in after they wash them all down because there's these little pellets there. He called them poo-poo pellets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can read the names on the poo-poo pellets, and they're the names of all these vitamin manufacturers. And I won't name one in particular because a right. lot of them have excipients on it that don't allow for absorption. Sure, you see a little bit of yellow coming off in your, in mm -hmm. your urine but for, the, for the B vitamins. Right. But consequently, what we're really looking at is uh, no, we're not getting no anything. nutrition is coming right. from that right. whatsoever. Right. Wow. Pretty sad, isn't it? It's pretty sad, and yet that's being marketed. And our food chain has been affected. Yes. We can go back to uh, Dr. Charles Northern, 1935, Senate Bill 284 in the United States, where he went to the U.S. Senate and said, I'm seeing deficiency syndromes in our patients. What can we do about it? And they weighed the, the minerals were deficient in the soil. 
-hmm. It was the middle of the Depression. They had no money. The government had no money. The people had no money. What were they going to do about it? Mm, they did nothing. They said, well, let them buy vitamins. So from that point on, you know that the food has been affected. Right. You know that they allow 10,000 different chemicals to be added mm -hmm. to the food. Right. If you look at a can and you cannot pronounce the words written on the can, do you really think that's something you want to be putting into your body? <laughs> does it, does really. it really make a lot of sense to put something you can't pronounce into your body? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. No, I 100%. So, I mean, something's in beets, and they're giving a, a segment of the beet, you know, if something's in a plant, something in Moringa oleifera, and there's something in Moringa oleifera. Children in Africa, and this all came out of Africa. Mm -hmm. This all started, the findings started in Africa. Right. And interesting things, you, you know, every eight seconds a child dies of a waterborne disease. Right. It's still happening around the world right now. In Africa, with the moringa plants, they used to take the seeds, squeeze the seeds for the oil, and throw the seed casings into the water. Well, it's an amazing thing that happened because there was less incidence of disease at the time of the squeezing of the seeds because there's antibacterial qualities, antiviral qualities, antipathogenic qualities to the seed casings. So as a consequence of that, there was less disease going around, and they were using the water, uh, the oil, mm -hmm. not as topical for skin, which, as it turns out, is tremendous for. They were using it for heat. They were using it to cook with. So the bottom line is that we have a plant discovered in Africa where children are still dying due to malnutrition. And you know what they use the leaves of the Moringa oleifera plant for? Just the leaves, three teaspoons a day of leaves. Quashi Orcor. You may not know what it is. It's protein malnutrition. It's the worst nutrition. Uh, people our age remember uh, back in the 60s when you see little posters of the, uh, of the orphans from Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and their, their arms were very thin, their legs were very thin, and their bellies were swollen. Right. Because they had quashiorcor or protein malnutrition. Well, three teaspoons of Moringolifera a day are all that are needed to successfully treat protein malnutrition. Now, people say all the time, well, how much vitamin A is in there? And how much vitamin D is in there? And how much vitamin E is in there? And B's and how much is in there? You know, we're not measuring what's in the plant. We see tremendous success from people who take the plant to the point that, what do you even want to measure? It has a positive effect on about 95% of the population. Right. Well over half of the population within the first three to six days has some form of detox reaction as it starts to kick out the metals in their body, the toxins in their body, killing off some of the patches in their body so they get a Yarish Herxheimer reaction. The results are there empirically based. This is a very potent plant. Mm -hmm. It's giving your body the tools that it needs to optimize its function to maximize its function. You know, RIA and RDA, the recommended daily allowances, uh, they were levels to prevent disease. Never did they talk about optimal function. They never right. got to that. So no. what can this plant do? Try it and see. <laughs> I like that line, try it and see. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's a fabulous plant. Okay. Um, I want to uh, share where they can get your book, Howard. Um, www.themoringabook.com. Right. Um, very straightforward. It's there on the web. And uh, my next one will be there as well. Which is called? 
uh, in pursuit of perfection. I'm Ringo LaFerra, the peak performance partner. Okay. Because that's what it is. And you see, when we, when we level out the playing field, when everybody's taking it, there won't be an advantage anymore. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Okay, we're down to our last couple of minutes. Is there anything in particular you want the audience to know? I mean, to me, it's the perfect plant. I think it's what we all need to be taking. We don't need the vitamins and the minerals and digestive enzymes and all of that anymore. Everything's in this plant. It's all there. There may be things that you need because your situation is particularly different. Right. There may be things you can get from other plants. Right. This is the plant you want to start with. Right. This will change people's lives. Right. Because it... Basically, does everything, doesn't it? The nutrition is not in the food. The body does everything. Right. Give it what it needs. Right. Okay. Well, I thank you for being on the show with me once again. My pleasure. And I want to say to the audience, thank you for the last five years. It's been fabulous. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. This is the last show. Um, they will be doing a repeat next week. I'm going to go away. I'm going to take a holiday. And I want to thank you all for joining me for the last five years and having all the wonderful guests on and it was a pleasure to have you here on my last show. My pleasure as always, Alva. Okay. Um, let's just, uh, once again, Howard, would you just repeat um, where to get your book? Uh, www.themoringabook.com. Okay. Uh, it's available and um, I think it's important that people understand that you can take charge of your own health that it's there for you. We have to take personal responsibility. Well, I, I feel it's important. It's important to everybody. Right. Um, one of the things I find very interesting about this as well is that I've lost 35 pounds on this without dieting because I put the nutrition back in. Correct. And I've just found it overwhelmingly successful for, for all of the clientele that I'm dealing with.